AR is one of the biggest opportunities in our lifetime. It is the technology that will bring us from a 2D screen-based world into a 3D spatial world. And yes, we are still in the very beginning of it. And just like VR, AR has so much more potential than just games and entertainment and again watching things on a big screen. If you play your cards right, you can tap into an opportunity before everybody jumps in when it's cool. We are still very very early to this game. Of course AR has been around for a long time but there are still a lot of undeveloped use cases so let me tell you why AR is such a huge opportunity and how you can tap into it. We will go through my personal lessons and mistakes that I've done that you can avoid of working in AR over the last six years now. Then we will talk about the unique values that only AR can provide so you know exactly how to do your value proposition and everything and then we will go through three use cases like typical use cases that you can do to employ your AR projects as well and these are real life use cases by the way. Before we get started who am I to talk about AR and business use cases? Well I've been in the AR VR field since 2016 and applying these technologies into multiple sectors over these many years. From gaming, healthcare, manufacturing, interior design, education, I've applied AR in many different industries now. And on the business side, well, since 2018, I've bootstrapped my own XR education company, Immersive Insiders, not sure if you can read it, and yeah, profitable business. And I'm just super, super obsessed about immersive technologies and then the business side of it. So let's go through some learnings and mistakes I did and amazing use cases that you can apply to your business or business idea. Before we dive deep into using AR and showing its awesomeness and everything, let's just go one step back to the fundamentals of business actually and talk about a big, big mistake that a lot of people and my past included did and this is something that has nothing to do with tech at all because business and building products it's not about the tech it is about solving a problem using technology which means there is a lot more that comes into building any product or any business outside of having the tech deploying the tech and this is super super important actually so that is why i want to talk about it briefly because you don't want to be one of these guys who's like yeah i got 25 hololenses so what do we do now it's like you got it all wrong already so let me talk about two stories of mine of personal mistakes that i did working in and on ar companies that failed but not because of the tech so the first one was still back in 2017 when i was studying computer science and even back then i already knew or really wanted to become an entrepreneur but uh, I kind of like lacked the skills and the confidence and everything. But this was already after I won the uh, programming contest like the Imagine Cup and had taught VR at universities already. So I had some credibility which was being noticed in the industry, in the local industry already. So I met some influential people in the VR, AR field in let's say some conferences, not to get into too many details here. And they wanted me to work with them on their holiday startup so two guys and they needed a developer they already had some product like probably some contract or something like this so they had something basically running but they didn't have a developer and they kind of like got me into their startup but since i was studying i <laughs> A classic story, I immediately dropped out of college because that was so much more exciting. You know, something that I would suggest you to do, but again, I did. And I went all in with this startup because I was like, okay, this is amazing. This is like HoloLens and back in 2017. So that was pretty early for these technologies really. And I just went all in and um, joined their company actually. Since I was promised to get like a third of the company and becoming CTO and everything, again, like you will see big promises. I was super, super excited to just like, go all in, like working all day, all night long on these projects. Of course, I took some rest and everything, so I'm not gonna be like, yes, I had like a 24 hour work day. Or some shit like this. But like, I was working a lot, kind of like got paid to barely pay rent. So that was kind of like a 
classical setup story really turned out that at some point they didn't really intend it maybe they didn't intend it from the very beginning to give me that kind of part of share and making me co-found and everything so the ceo told me yeah hmm, there's some problems the investor doesn't want to give you 30 percent blah 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 which then led to okay hmm maybe 20 percent hmm, maybe 15 percent maybe five percent and as you may think at the end came down to nothing really so i basically got nothing out of it i uh, was working on this one we had some arguments later on in early 2018 and um, at some point we just moved different ways because there was like no end in sight basically so that was like a big 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 lesson i the idiot that i was back then didn't sign any contract so they just kept the code and everything and just went out uh, went on without me and that was a big big lesson for me to work with the right people and this is probably the number one reason why startups fail usually that there's like no founder match and everything next to having no product market fit but we will talk about this one as well but uh having like the foundation right which means working with the right people is extremely essential because if you don't have this one you can have the most amazing tech the best ar use case on the planet our use case was pretty cool actually so we just so we have some context also without getting into too many details we were using the hololens to apply it to big manufacturing machines so you could put on the hololens check out the machines get like real-time data for maintenance for predicting failure and everything for getting real-time data all of that stuff so it's a very very typical enterprise use case for working with big machines and everything because it is just helping so much to have the right information at the right time at the right machine which is something we will talk about later on as well so always make sure to sign contracts and when something sounds too good to be true it usually is the next example is a kind of sad one because this is actually one of the best if not the best AR use case I've ever seen and especially worked in. So let me tell you what it's all about. This was back in 2020 when I, that was like my last job before I went full time on Immersive Insiders and we had a HoloLens 2 project or product that helped kitchen sellers to sell their kitchens so imagine being in an empty room and then you want to build your kitchen and you can do that with like these ikea kind of things or like having it on pen and paper but imagine having a, like holograms of the kitchen and then you can actually place all the furniture and switch out the arrangement on your ipad so it's very easy to navigate very easy to use for a lot of people and then also you have like multiple people in the same virtual room they could be any side on the planet so it was an incredibly good use case because the salespeople could very easily convince the um, end customers that, hey, this is like the holographic kitchen. This is exactly the kitchen you are going to get. Because the coolest thing was this was like one by one dimension. So it was not like a small kind of thing or like a VR thing or like a screen. It was you were actually standing in that room, in that empty room or like even a actual kitchen and putting the holographic kitchen on top of it. So that was incredibly good use case, not just by talking about it, but also by all all of the statistics and everything so without into getting too many details here so everything was measured they had like increased revenues they had increased buying rate increased um, price and everything so everything was like going really well so this was a super good use case so why did it fail i mean quick disclaimer i'm not a business analyst and i was also not on the board of that company i was like a regular developer slash all-rounder doing everything really but here are like some of the main things that i've learned from my own entrepreneurial experiences again i've been doing a lot of projects for so many years now especially with xr as well so here are like my takes on why this failed and what you can learn from this as well keep your focus I think this was like the single and biggest mistake that this particular company does. I mean, not existing anymore, rest in peace. We were pivoting a lot. Like any new customer was like 180 here, 180 here. I mean, that costs a lot of money, a lot of stress, a lot of focus. And that is really difficult to not fall into the shiny new object syndrome. We have the same problem as Immersive Insiders. We get so much opportunity. I mean, not to brag or anything, but we get a lot of like people and companies and everybody reaching out and wants to work with us, wants to do projects but we have to be super hyper focused into our core strength which is immersive AR VR education not other projects of course sometimes we do like a little side project here and there but the end goal is really to keep the focus on the core things you, you're doing and I believe that was one of the strongest reasons why this company failed another big thing was um, neglecting company culture I think 
that is something in the early times it doesn't matter too much when you're like just the founders and everything you don't want to have like silos you don't want to have a uh, big egos weird secretive things and just like a not amazing company culture at least from my personal opinion and this is something then again of course the team level is not so strong really and that of course also aids to um, breaking the company again that was like not the biggest reason the biggest reason was really like higher management failure on other things especially sales and marketing as well a lot of these kind of things but business management all of that stuff but again i don't want to get into too many details and give you something to learn from so really keeping the focus is essential probably the biggest mistake company culture incredibly important and never forget sales and marketing like of course these are incredibly important even if you have an amazing product you still need somebody to show it to other people really so let's now talk about the unique business values that only ar can bring first of all let's just go one step back to value again what is value definitely check out my vr business case video as well where i talk a lot more in depth about value in general which is critical to also kind of like get the full picture ar has been something that is kind of like deeply in our imagination our dreams for such a long time just like every fiction or movie or anime whether it's like minority report or like dragon ball z with the scouters and everything or iron man like the whole avengers slash iron man kind of series just showcases how amazing it is to use ar that is like something that we have been dreaming for such a long time and this section now is really the foundation for any ar project or product that you want to build so first of all kind of obvious but enhanced reality you add a digital layer to a physical environment with ar and pretty much AR only because that's the definition of AR. So really the core thing that you can think about is you get the right information at the right time in the right physical space and this is super powerful actually think about all of that context-based information that you could add again into like machines any kind of machine small big whatever whether it's like a instruction or maintenance or prediction or real-time data it is so much helpful real-time again real-time information with iot sensors you can like extract all of that you can visualize it because if you have like a set of data uh, in a database or something like this and you see it as a human you're like cool okay wow amazing but if you actually see like a red big graph like going down or going up really high the temperature you're like oh shit something is going on here and that is already incredibly helpful and saves so much money in so much big enterprise areas but again we also talked about having a whole room in your environment and like switching them in seconds i mean you can have like a room a version a and then version b and c and then then switch them out like this try to do that in real life i mean that is impossible so this is also something where ai can save so much time it's incredible also having like shared holograms so you can have somebody actually here as well i mean that kind of like leads into other use cases not really the 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 digital information but still it's something that is really helpful having your run path when you run like a marathon or something like this so you can track yourself over time you can self-analyze but not just running could be anything again and the big thing is you can do it while you're working while you are actually in the field whether it's like a construction site or any factory or where whatever it is where it could be like dangerous to be in the vr headset running around and i know i know you have passed through already which is why the whole like ar vr kind of thing at some point they just merge together anyway because if you have like vr with pass through which actually is the Apple Vision Pro, so technically it is a VR headset, but then you have like AR with full um, opacity and everything, then it kind of feels like VR. So these kind of things merge together anyways. We have XR headsets already that do both pretty well, like the Vario ones. And that is why I believe these technologies kind of come together anyway at some point, which is future proof why we call this company Immersive Insiders and not VR Insiders or AR Insiders. But yeah, that was just like a side note here. So the next example is kind of my favorite one. I really like this one. You can get x-ray vision with ar and again this is just something magical i mean you can show the same freaking use case on linkedin or any platform like 100,000 times and you still every single time you get like 5 million likes and shares and everybody because it's like oh my god this is like superhero abilities and everything so having extra vision 
is super helpful. It is especially helpful where the consequences of doing mistakes is extremely high. So let me give you an example. Let's say we are in a construction site. We want to rip off the street to change the pipelines or whatever. And then we make a mistake because like we drill like a huge hole and maybe there is no pipeline or there you just break the pipeline or something like this and having a digital overlay with AR by getting the information data for construction it's called BIM building information model I think um, you can add all of that information into your vision and it's crazy it's so cool actually to just like walk around the building and you see like all the insights like all the wires and cables and pipes and everything and again it helps you to just save a lot of cost by not making these mistakes that are really expensive but also like safety reasons like if you drill a hole where there's like a big wire electricity wire kind of thing i don't know i'm not a construction dude but you kind of get the point right so you get a lot of kind of like extra layer of security as well i mean and this can also be used for education for healthcare for so many other industries and here also like always the creativity is your limit so next one especially with um hololens and magic leap or only with these ones, you can work hands-free. And this is especially important when you are in a factory or like a manufacturing hall or anything like this. So generally, enterprise will benefit with this one as well. You can use your hands for like operating a machine and then it gives you like real-time information on something. That is also a huge benefit of using AR. I mean, otherwise you would have to grow like a third arm or like a fourth arm to do that stuff while holding like the book or something like this. I mean, it already feels like primitive to hold like a book and be like this when you have things like AR already. So generally when it comes to AR, especially in enterprise, it is not about making a ton of money. It is more about saving a ton of money by reducing mistakes, by improving performance, by increasing efficiency. By all of these things, you actually help the company to save a lot of money, which is, of course, equally as important to these big companies already. So let's just summarize this part. Why is it so helpful and why is the performance increased? First of all, you get the exact information that you need at the right time, at the right place incredibly helpful already i didn't even talk about it but you get incredibly good training and education use cases you can train the people a lot more efficient i talk about it in the vr video again i don't want to overlap these two too much and also you have like a full-fledged computer in your vision without using a hands and this is pretty powerful already better efficiency there are so many things again i could talk about this forever but here we just have like faster help real-time understanding you minimize errors which saves a lot of money you have inventory management, indoor navigation, all of these things. You can use it for prototyping and visualization, which is also super, super helpful. And there are a lot of use cases also here. Just check out Bell Helicopters, for example, but also for the whole topic of remote assistance. Again, like so, so many things. I could talk about this forever. So if you have any idea on what you want to talk me next, maybe AR versus VR, when to use which could be a cool idea. Let me know in the comments what you want me to talk about. And yeah, let's move on so let's talk about a couple of real life use cases i've prepared three use cases now one which is a more like creative innovative solution the um, rooms one with the um, hologram furniture i already talked about then a, a kind of standard use case that everybody can do who has the skills for it and then a set of use cases especially for enterprise let's go through one of the use cases the um, hologram furniture ones in more detail so you kind of get the idea of how to think about value and ar and how to kind of like structure a product slash business on it. So here again, we have our value equation from Alex Omozi, who has probably written the best business books of all time. His second one is actually coming out, so I would recommend to check it out. I explain this thing in more detail again in the other video. We can actually break down the value into two groups. So on one side, the sales guy is getting the value and the other person would be the end consumer. Let's now focus on the salesperson because otherwise the video would be like two hours long if I break down everything into detail. So what exactly wants the sales guy to do? So what is his kind of end goal? It is selling kitchens as much as possible at a higher price, ideally even get referrals because his salary depends on the amount of kitchens he sells, which is already the dream outcome. Let's now talk about the likelihood of achievement. And this is something like the better you can showcase what exactly the 
end customer is getting, the more likely it will happen. So if you have a scribble of a kitchen, it's like, meh, what is this? If you have a 2D visualization, it's still like, okay. If you have a 3D visualization, like in Ikea, it's kind of like a good step already. But if you have actually the kitchen in that room already, just as a hologram, it is literally the definition of what you see is what you get because this is exactly in the exact dimension what the person is getting so that part is of course like a 10 out of 10 and again not just in theory this was actually like for i don't know whatever reason i was in the board meetings with these like big companies uh, when they discuss the statistics i don't know why they sent me instead of somebody else but i was like seeing all of the detailed statistics of the increased revenue increased um, like sales percentage increased um, price um, raises and everything and they made like a ton like they made an roi after a very short amount of time so it's kind of like a machine where you put 1000 euro in and you get 2000 euro back pretty amazing so now comes the most critical parts really of any project using technology time and uh, effort so time wise imagine it would take like one hour to set up the whole room he has to measure everything maybe he has to get like the floor plan of the uh, kitchen person like the end customer and then he has to set up like two computers with a server connection connection and all of that has I mean that would be really annoying to the salesperson he would not even like to use it and to the end customer and that solution was like you open up you plug in a um, Raspberry Pi into a power socket done no internet connection everything local no dependencies no weird server structure whatever everything was super stable and was working immediately and this is critical super super important because if it fails like i don't know like two out of ten times or like even one out of ten times most likely people will be like ah, i don't like it i just go back to drawing my freaking kitchen so <laughs> that is so important that is like a frictionless immediately working solution and the ease of use is so 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 important which is also why back then we had like an ipad as a navigation because people know how to use an ipad it's like very simple just like dragging things into the uh, place and then you see it in real immediately so that is also incredibly important and a mistake i see a lot of people do that they have like this huge sophisticated technological systems that are so hard to use like even as a developer you're like okay why do we have to put in the ip manually and synchronize it with this and this thing now i mean again like i can do it of course but nobody on the not tech side will ever be able or happy to do that kind of stuff so yeah i mean if you would have to train every salesperson like to a very detailed level on how to use the hololens with the stupid gesture and everything especially in germany Germany where people are already like very like cringing to their fax machine and like it feels like they just discovered the internet they were not very the most open demographic of adapting to new technologies so you gotta make it super super simple the next example is a classic example i don't want to get into too many details here because we are already stretching this video pretty long so i would love if you let me know if you like these longer videos or if you want me to keep it short as, as well do you like the depth of the video or should i keep them like 10 minutes long but uh, here we have a kind of like a showcase project so you can showcase any product machine kind of thing that is like too big too heavy too large in ar or vr as well and that is already super helpful for these companies because they have a lot of machines they want to talk about it and they want to showcase it on their ipad maybe or on the hololens this is something that we built like countless times so we built a lot of these kind of use cases by now and this is something that will kind of like almost never go out of style really because this is just such a helpful use case and easy to implement so just make sure again back to the value equation make sure it is easy to use fast to set up and no hassle like it should just run very very stable that is the most critical part here and here you can also see like a use case that i built back in 28 no 2019 i guess back when i was still working in another <laughs> company in an xr department and that is like a use case you can just build if you have like decent coding skills and good 3d skills and the last example is really like a set of products and use cases especially for enterprise that you can use and let me talk about more about remote assist and kind of like virtual guides again with remote assist you can communicate with experts hands-free and they can assist you in real time while you are on the field 
They can add like graphical overlays, instructions, annotations to your vision. You can save a lot of money, time, effort, error for mistake. We already talked about this. So remote assist is always a big, big, big classic in enterprise AR. So if you have a unique insight on any particular industry or any particular company, factory, whatever, you can kind of like tailor the solution to this one. Similar to using something like um, guides and everything where you can do instructions with AR, training, education. Sometimes AR is even better than VR for this one. And um, that is also something that is probably never go out of style because it is something that is always needed and these technologies just make it better than having like physical with like pen and paper kind of style. Oof, let's summarize. We talked a lot about AR and uh, business use cases. So first of all, I mean, we started with like some personal mistakes. And again, these are like the prerequisites that you should always have in mind to think about everything outside of the text. Think about the business side, sales, marketing, people, human connection, all of that stuff don't forget about this one super critical but then we talk, also talked about the extremely helpful values that ar can bring of course here being um, ad adding that digital overlay having x-ray vision having like the remote assistance hands-free all of that stuff is super helpful and you kind of have hopefully a good understanding of how to think about value in terms of business with ar use cases as well and since ar and vr are merging together and we can just call them immersive technologies much better term anyways it is very critical to also understand the vr side of it even though, even though if you're like an ar guy having the vr side of it would be extremely helpful so i would highly recommend you to check out the vr business use case video there also i explain a couple of topics um, that i didn't cover here as well like value and uh, the value equation by alex omozi and everything so if you haven't watched it already, check out the VR business case video. And then if you did watch it already, check out the XR uh, skills that you need to make it big. 